Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Biblical Prepping. I am Judith Garden, and this is the Prepper Portions. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the kitchen this morning. This is going to be another one of those hands-on videos. <laughs> I am getting ready to prepare some bagels to rise. Um, I want to do this because one of our sons has actually, just this week, in fact, gotten into um, suddenly baking bread and he was going to try bagels so I'm going to try bagels today. I've done them before a number of times so I'm hoping he'll actually watch this video maybe get some pointers and tips. Bagels are easy. I just use my standard bread dough. This is the five minute um, five minutes a day bread dough recipe that I have altered to fit our dietary needs. The dough is made from a hard white wheat um, it is ground by the company that grows and, and manufactures this wheat flour. It is very finely ground. I love it. It's a hard white winter wheat. It is also, um, that's 50% of the flour in this recipe. 50% of the flour is also from hard white wheat that has been sprouted, dried, and then reground, or ground, pardon me, into flour. So it is part sprouted flour, part whole wheat flour and I'm going to make four bagels this morning. Now the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is lay my parchment down because we're going to do something similar to what we do uh, with a standard bread loaf, only you'll see as we go along it'll be a little bit different. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of yellow cornmeal and dust because I do not want my bagel forms to stick to my parchment. If you watched one of my other videos and saw it didn't matter to me that the buns stuck a little bit, uh, because they would come off later on in baking. But these I do not want to stick. I have my damp linen cloth already ready for the process. I'm going to set that there. And I have my... This is the last piece of dough from the second batch of five minutes in a day dough that I made. Now I'm going to split it into four pieces, just like so. There's two. I now have three. And number four. What you want to do is form it just like you do the bread dough and a little bit of a round tucking under your uneven edges. Now some people will roll the bagel into a rope and meet the ends. I do not. I actually take my thumb and press it through the center like so and I meet it in the middle with my index finger. Then all you have to do is make your hole nice and even all the way around. Make sure to stretch your bagel out and make your hole a little bit large because as it rises you don't want your bagel hole to close up completely. There we go. Bagel number one. Again, tuck it under. Now I take my thumb on the top and push through first so the more rounded area is on the top and your bagel looks a little bit nicer when you get to the next step and then the baking. There is bagel number two. Bagel number four doesn't look quite as nice. <laughs> but there we go. Bagel number four. Now I will cover them with my damp linen cloth and let them rise. These are going to need to rise for about an hour and a half because the dough is pretty chilled. So we're going to let them go. It's nice and warm in the house today because it's cold outside and the heater's on. So we're going to let them rise and I will be back in a bit.
If you were here earlier in the morning, which of course you were, because if you're at this point in the video, you already know I got the bagels ready to rock and roll. We're going to continue with that um, recipe, but I'm also going to show you what I'm going to have with my bagel in just a moment, and it's going to involve my coffee cup. So behind me, let me move these out of the way. I have on the stove my favorite pot for taking care of the next step of bagels. This is an old frying pan. It is about three and a half inches deep. So you will need a pot that is about that deep where you can put in enough water to boil your bagels. So I already have in this pot about six cups of water ready to go. I'm going to, it's not on so I can touch that metal spot. Turn on the burner to high and bring it to a full rolling boil. I'm adding one teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt to the water. That helps the buoyancy of the bagels as they boil. Now I was thinking about topping these with something but I don't feel like that's an option for me today. I'm on a time constraint. I need to get things done more quickly so I'm not going to worry about that. We've got that ready to go and ready to get boiled and there are our bagels. They are all risen and ready to go into the oven. See how nice they are. Now when you go to remove these from the pan, you're going to want to move them, remove them very carefully. You don't want to deflate them. I'll show you how to do that. For this, I'm going to need my kitchen scissors and I'm going to just simply cut the parchment paper in between the bagels. This is one of the reasons why I like to use parchment paper. Now if you've been on my recipe online um, for the bagels, you will notice that it says to cut apart any bagels that might have stuck together during the rising process. I've not had that problem because I left enough space in between the bagels. These are all separated and ready to go in as soon as the water is boiling. You're also going to want some sort of a slotted spoon, ladle, or scoop. This is one I actually got in a yard sale with a bunch of canning pots and I have kept this around. I didn't, when I first bought it, have any clue what it was used for. Now I know so many uses for this tool. It's great in the deep fryer. <laughs> it is great in a pot. Um, if you're trying to make chicken broth and need to strain out the chicken bones, things like that, this is really awesome. So that is, and of course, for fishing out your bagels. Now I also have here the rack that I used to um, put over the warm burner on the stove as the heat was coming up from the stove. It helped, it helped the bagels to rise more. They weren't rising enough for me to be able to continue with the video. I also have my, um, what was a damp rag, and I'm going to fold this and keeping it away from any hot burners, I'm going to just put it under here so that as my bagels drain on the cooling rack, I don't get drips all over the place. That is heating up nicely, getting ready to boil. Okay, we are back, and while I've been waiting for water to boil, I did another video we'll put up for you later on as well. Um, the water is almost to a full rolling boil. It's really close, but um, I'll just let you know that I have here my baking stone ready to go into the oven. This one does not need to be preheated like some of the other recipes um, have said that you needed to preheat because you're going to be pre-cooking the bagels partway through the boiling water. And that will actually cause them to rise a little bit more as well. They will go on this. I have greased the stone. I just love stoneware and how it cooks and bakes things. So that's why um, it's ready. And I have, oops, a little too high. I have our oven set to 345. It should be set to 350 for most elevations. Please remember we are a little bit higher. We're at a little over 3000 feet. So I have to adjust some things sometimes for that. And here we go. Now we're at a full rolling boil. So you take your bagel that is on your parchment and very gently place it on your slotted spoon. 
then slide it into the water like so. It is so easy to do. Then you do this. I only do two at a time, maybe three. Um, and then I start to count in my head. You want to time 45 seconds. All right, now you want to flip it gently over. Now sometimes it doesn't want to go, so I pull out a serving fork and sometimes I will guide it over just like so to cook the other side. Now count to 30 again or to 45. I've come to be able to tell what about the right time is by how they look in the center of the bagel. Then you scoop it out, draining off your water, and place your bagel to drain onto your cooking rack, your cooling rack. Then do the same thing with your other bagels, sliding them gently into the water. Now what you can do with your first bagels, simply slide them onto your prepared baking sheet. You want to let these drain a little bit. In the meantime, you can shut this off. And this would be a good time if you want to start applying an egg wash. If you like egg bagels, it's a great opportunity to mix up your egg, brush it on the other two, and as soon as these are dry on the top, this one is almost there. This one's a little slower. I can move those to the pan and if I'm going to egg wash I will do the same. Now I'm not planning to, I'm going to just bake them um, because I do have another video to get started on and I'm in a pinch for time. Jim's got appointments at 1 o'clock, it's already 11.15. <laughs> the nice thing about the bagels is we can eat one today and since this is the proper day, preparation day for our Sabbath, which is tomorrow, um, starting tonight at sundown, we will be able to have bagels for breakfast tomorrow too, which will be tasty. So we can have bagels for breakfast. There we go, that one is ready, and this one is ready. And it is as simple as plopping them in the oven to bake. Again, the oven is set to 345 for our elevation. You should set yours to 350 and they will bake for 20 minutes. I might have to add an extra five at the end. We'll have to wait and see how they look. Then I just can wash up all my dishes and we're ready to go. Now I'm going to insert some photos and whatnot of the done bagels. And um, give a few more additional pointers at the end. So make sure you uh, wait to see that. And it will also be available on the website for um, printing as a PDF, as well as the recipe for the bagels, which is really simple. I have a lot of other bread recipes for um, using up your sourdough starter. Uh, if you're planning to use up your sourdough starter before the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread this year, um, I don't worry about using up sourdough starter. That's a whole nother story. And we will be presenting that on TorahForWomen.com. In the meantime, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, and we want to see you back again so you will get the notifications and be able to stay up on what we're doing. Blessings and Shalom.